Everyone and welcome to another episode of The Fan. Got some good stuff coming your way in this show, but right off the top, one of the best stories in rugby league, Melbourne centre Justin Ollum. Now, he's not just a cult hero to the Melbourne Storm fans. I reckon he's got the admiration of every single fan of the NRL. And we often talk about players coming from humble beginnings. Well, there can be no player who comes from more humble beginnings than Justin Ollum, because when he first started playing football, he didn't even have a ball to throw around. He had to improvise. We're going to hear his whole story right now, from then to now, where he's a grand final winner with a Melbourne Storm. Nichols, a loose ball. A Hearn didn't want to pick it. Oh. away again. The Hunters. Well, you can shut the game ball. now. And Justin Orr will score under the post. Here they go, Maitland. Ball alive. Justin Olin, everyone in Papua New Guinea have got up to cheer. Pappenhausen's kick, ricochets, here we go again. Olin's got three. Justin Olin finishes off a hat trick. First of all, I just want to go over rugby league as a, as a young fella. Yeah. You never owned a rugby league ball? Nah, it's um, back in the village. Um, rugby league ball is like, it's care, I guess. Um, not everyone has it. And then, like, someone will have one and it'll be for, like, a few months and then all the grip will come off and it'll be so smooth. <laughs> and then, yeah, we, we, we never have, like, good rugby balls. But, like, when we go to the schools and they're, like, we used to use, like, Coke bottle, whatever, they put our... <laughs> put pack grass in so we can kick it. We make sure you don't kick it on the heads because it's, um, you know, hurts you, so we kick it in the belly part. Sell the viewers your village. What would they find in the village of Gone where you, where you grew up? Almost 80% of the houses I back then was, uh, I think, the houses made from like bush material. So the only things they use, used are like nails and all of that. So but if you go back in the village, it's like all the houses are like from bush material. So. When did you see rugby league for the first time? When did oh, you sort of take an interest? Nah, because uh, my rugby league is always being in you know, everyone. Mm. They played in the village. You know, we will have like social games where the one village will play against another. So you yep. growing up, you just, we are all, all around rugby league. Uh, my uncle plays for the Coons as well. So yeah, so he used to come back home and then they're like, I'm sort of, um, you know, I have a rugby league family, I guess. The impact of this club that Marcus Bai made, I mean, Marcus Bai was superstar material yeah. and the impact he would have had on young blokes across PNG. Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember growing up, um, they used to have this photo on the Pepsi uh, can, and then yeah, we used to collect them. And then, yeah, if you collect, um, um, I think you have to open the Pepsi can and see if you win something, and then they'll <laughs> give you like a rugby ball or whatever, you gotta collect it. So we will always collect like the Pepsi cans to check if we win a <laughs> rugby ball, and then yeah. What age are you when you play your very first formal game of rugby league competition? My parents, especially my mom, is uh, really big on education, so I didn't really play play rugby league, I guess, uh, growing up. I used to watch it heaps, uh, but then, like, I didn't play until when I came to uni. And when I did my first year, that's when I joined my uh, department team and then we played in the uni competition, so that's when I started playing, I guess. And the stepping stones along there um, into the Intra Super Cup with PNG Hunters. Yeah. Can I ask you how you felt when you're playing for the Falcons then the next year and you find yourself in the, gr the grand yeah, final against it, the Hunters? Yeah, it feels a little bit different, you know, to play against all the boys that I played together, not only in the Hunters, but like uh, in the national team as well for Kumuls. And to play against them, it's sort of um, it's a weird feeling to play hard against them. But if I was losing in the grand final, I'd rather lose to the Hunters than you know, to any other teams. Can you put us in your shoes, the first contact that the Melbourne Storm had with you, that the Storm uh, want you, Justin? Let's just say, um, I couldn't believe it. Like, I, I, like my, one of my big goals was to play in a row, uh, but I didn't expect it to be happening that soon, to get a call. I was, I wanted to be like, I expected to be like a year or two later, but then I think I was like, five, six games into Q Cup and then the storm called me and I couldn't believe it. But I didn't want to tell anyone. I didn't even tell my parents or I didn't tell anyone because I didn't want to, you know, be 
excited or, you know, sort of show off, but I guess I just wanted to be confirmed like proper signing first before I can tell anyone. So I didn't even tell my parents. I didn't even tell anyone. And I asked my coach that time to don't tell anyone as well. So can you just keep it on the low until, you know, everything's official, whatever. So, yeah. But I was, you know, I couldn't believe it. I was really happy I just came out and, you know, I made a short prayer and said, thank you. And now you sit in front of me as a grand final winner with the Melbourne Storm. First of all, in, in your own words, how does that feel? How did that all happen? I'm just, I was just happy to play one game, like, to be honest. Like, I was, I just wanted to play one game. And to come in and play the grand final, that's, like I've said before, it's blessings. And, you know, I take it with both hands. I'm not taking it for granted, whatever. I, it's something that, um, you know, I hope that I will influence more kids back at home, Papua New Guinea, to at least, you know, because we love rugby league that much, you know. There's always a pet in rugby league. and. You know, if they have dreams and goals, they can follow it, I guess. What have you been told about grand final night in your home village, what it was like? Uh, I didn't talk to them the whole week because I didn't want unnecessary press or whatever. I just um, wanted to, you know, win it first, I guess. How many people had television, had access to television on grand final night last year? Definitely all, my, all the people in the village will um, walk at least an hour or two back uh, to somewhere where they can find a TV to watch, so yeah. My, my house, my, my house, I think, uh, my parents got a TV and it's working, so everyone goes there to watch, I guess, probably 50 plus people. And then to score the first yeah, try, you talk schools. about dreams come true. At the back, Pappenhausen, it comes to Adoka, back on the inside, and going to put it down, it looked like Olin lost it, short of the line. They start here with a penalty try to Papua New Guinea's favourite son, Justin Ollum. That's unbelievable. I can't believe I didn't expect to do that as well. Yeah, but like I said, everything just happened so fast. Uh, I'm trying to digest it and understand it, but I'm pretty sure, like, putting myself in, you know, bringing myself back to the village. I would have been so happy for me, you know. Mm. Or like the vibe back there, it's it's crazy the way we love rugby league back there. And it's like, we get um, so excited for Origin and, you know, all these games, even a normal NRL game. when it comes to grand final or like Kumus playing, it's another, you know, energy altogether. It's everyone cooks their dinner, whatever, really early, and then they just ready. Because some people, they don't have TV, they'll have to get ready to walk for like an hour or two. Uh, from my village, uh, back then, I used to walk at least for an hour to go somewhere to find a TV. And then you gotta pay to go and stand and watch, I guess. Is it fair to say every time you run out onto the field in an NRL game, you feel the love and the support of your village? They're with you? 100%, yeah, definitely. I. I just, every time, to be fair, like every time when I run out, I just see the, you know, the Storm logo on my jersey and even the NRL logo, and it's, I just can't believe that I'm here. It's just, just in every game is just special to me, I guess.